Welcome to the Silicon Fox podcast, where we explore the habits and stories of high performers. Join us as we dive into their journeys, analyze live blood tests, and break down the science behind key biomarkers to help you optimize your health. I'm your host, Mitchell Eschner, an ex-pro soccer player, a current sponsored hybrid athlete, a health tech founder, and a longevity enthusiast. Today, we're diving deep into the science of saunas. From ancient Finnish traditions to cutting-edge medical research, sauna use is being recognized not as just a relaxing ritual, but as a serious tool for cardiovascular health, mental well-being, and even neuroprotection. But like most interventions, there's a flip side. We'll also cover the real medical risks, ones that can be fatal if ignored. So by the end of this episode, you'll walk away with a practical and evidence-based understanding of how to use sauna safely and effectively. Let's get into it. So what exactly happens when you step into a sauna? Whether it's a traditional Finnish sauna at 80 to 100 degrees Celsius or an infrared sauna closer to 45 to 60 degrees Celsius, the key mechanism is heat exposure. The heat causes your body to enter a state of controlled stress, technically called passive hypothermia. Heat rate increases, blood vessels dilate, and your core body temperature rises. Essentially, it mimics moderate intensity exercise. Cardiac output, the amount of blood your heart pumps, can increase by 60 to 70%. Blood is shunted from your core to the skin to help you cool off through your sweating. All of this triggers what's called thermoregulatory response. This isn't just a short-term phenomenon. Repeated sauna exposure helps your body learn to handle heat stress better, and in doing so, it develops improved cardiovascular and cellular resilience. When your body's exposed to the high temperatures of a sauna, it doesn't just sweat, it adapts. This adaptation is a pr- protective response to what we might call controlled stressor. This process is known as hormesis. Hormesis is the biological principle that small amounts of stress, if applied correctly, can actually make the body stronger. Think of it like lifting weights for your cells. You're not damaging them in a harmful way. You're stressing them just enough to trigger a cascade of repair, recovery, and resilience mechanisms. One of the main players in cellular adaptation process is the class of molecules called heat shock proteins, or HSPs. These proteins are named for how they, well they were first discovered, in cells exposed to heat. When your body gets hot, like in a sauna, cells start to produce these HSPs in higher quantities. They act like cellular repair agents, identifying and correcting misfolded proteins before they clump together and cause damage. Misfolded proteins are a hallmark in many age-related diseases, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other forms of dementia. They also help regulate inflammation, reduce oxidative stress, and protect against cellular damage caused by heat, toxins, or even intense physical exertion. In a way, you can think of HSP as the body's internal janitors, cleaning up cellular messes before they turn into chronic issues. And the more consistently you expose your body to heat within reason, the more robust these cleanup crews become. Another key player activated by sun-induced heat is a protein complex called NRF2. This is your body's master switch for antioxidant defense. When NRF2 is activated, enters the nucleus of your cells, turns your hundreds of genes that protect you from oxidative damage, inflammation, and environmental toxins. NRF2 activation has been linked to lower levels of systemic inflammation, reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, slower biological aging, and protection against neurodegeneration. So by spending time in the sauna, you're not just relaxing. You're literally flipping the switch on your body's detox and defense systems. Now let's talk about nitric oxide, a molecule that plays a massive role in heart health. When you're in the sauna, the increased heat and blood flow put general pressure, called shear stress, on the walls of your blood vessels. This simulates the release of an enzyme called ENOS, one that produces nitric oxide. Nitric oxide causes your blood vessels to dilate or widen, which improves circulation, lowers blood pressure, and increases oxygen and nutrient delivery throughout the body. This process doesn't just help in the moment. Repeated stimulation through sauna use has been shown to increase the number and function of endothelial progenitor cells, cells that can help repair blood vessels and build new ones. Over time, this can significantly improve vascular function and may reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Now let's talk some results. What does science say about actual sauna use? In terms of cardiovascular health, multiple studies published since 2020 show that regular sauna use reduces the risk of high blood pressure, stroke, sudden cardiac arrest, or even cardiovascular mortality. In fact, men who use sauna four to seven times a week had a 47% lower risk of developing hypertension and a 61% lower risk of stroke over the course of nearly 25 years. Sauna improves endothelial function. That's the lining of your blood vessels, reduced atrial stiffness, and improved lipid profiles. If that sounds technical, basically your blood vessels get more flexible, blood flow is better, and your cholesterol markers improve. Sauna also appears promising for people with periphery artery disease, especially those who can't exercise easily. When combined with exercise, the benefits amplify, lower blood pressure, better cholesterol, and enhance cardiorespiratory fitness. So for your heart, sauna isn't just self-care, it's therapeutic. Similar benefits are seen in brain and mental health. Frequent sauna use is associated with 65 to 66% lower risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. The mechanisms likely involve the heat shock proteins mentioned before, proteins your cells produce in your response to stress, which help prevent the kind of protein misfolding and plaque buildup that drive neurodegenerative diseases. On the mental health side, sauna use is linked to reduce anxiety, stress, and depression. It improves sleep, helps with emotional regulation, and can even enhance cognitive processing. 
Some of this is purely physiological, lower cortisol, better circulation. But there's also a social and psychological component. The ritual of sauna use encourages re relaxation, reflection, and even social bonding. If you have asthma or chronic bronchitis, sauna might help even open up airways and reduce symptoms, temporarily at least. Some early research even suggests a possible role in reducing COVID-19 severity, though more studies are needed. Muscle recovery is another area where saunas shine. Blood flow increases, pain decreases, and soreness improves. Interestingly, if you're a non-athlete, traditional saunas and infrared saunas both help reduce fatigue and muscle damage post-exercise. For athletes, warm water immersion might work better. So again, context matters. The best heat therapy depends on your goals and your body. Are you a health coach or running a health course and looking to level up your client's experience? With Cyfox Health at-home blood test, you can deliver lab-quality blood work right to your client's door. Seamlessly ship samples back for fast and actionable results. Personalize every consult with the data that matters. Clients who complete a Cyfox test are 60% more likely to enroll in a paid program after their consult compared to those who only join a sales call. If you're ready to give your clients the edge, go to cyfoxhealth.com forward slash partner. And as a Silicon Fox podcast listener, enjoy 10% off your first bulk order. Now, it's important to always flip the coin. Saunas aren't risk-free. The most serious health risks is heat stroke and dehydration. It can be fatal if ignored when your core temperature rises too high, especially over 40 degrees. The most serious health risk is heat stroke and dehydration. It can be fatal if ignored. When your core temperature rises too high, especially over 40 degrees Celsius, your organs start to shut down. One case study from January 2025 involved a woman in her 70s who stayed in a sauna too long without hydrating. Her body temperature at 42 degrees Celsius. She had seizures, organ damage, and spent 12 days in the hospital. Three similar cases resulted in death. Even healthy people can succumb to heat stroke in the wrong conditions. Hydration, duration, and awareness are non-negotiable. If you have heart disease, low blood pressure, or are recovering from a heart attack, sauna use can be risky. The cardiovascular system gets heavily taxed. Heart rate spikes and blood pressure can swing unpredictably. Rapidly going from hot sauna into cold water, a popular practice, can spike your blood pressure dangerously. So always consult with your doctor if you have any underlying health conditions. One aspect that often gets overlooked is medication interactions. Some medications like diuretics, beta blockers, and antihistamines can impair your body's ability to sweat or regulate blood pressure. That can increase your risk of overheating or passing out. Always check with your doctor or pharmacist before using the sauna if you're on any prescriptions. Some of the populations that should be cautious are often elderly people, children, pregnant women, anyone under the influence, and people with chronic sweating disorders or neurological conditions. So how do you get all these benefits without the risks? Well, it's incredibly important to start slow. Begin with 5 to 10 minute sessions and build up. Most benefits are seen at 15 to 30 minutes, 4 to 7 times per week. Always remember to stay hydrated. Drink water before and after if you sweat a lot and use electrolyte drinks. Avoid alcohol or drugs. Cool down regularly and most importantly, talk to your doctor, especially if you have heart health conditions. The science is clear. Saunas are more than a wellness trend. They're a legitimate health intervention with the potential to improve heart health, brain function, recovery, and even lifespan when used wisely. Used incorrectly, they can be dangerous or even fatal. Think of the sauna like you would a prescription drug or a workout regimen. It should be personalized, intentional, and based on your body's needs. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you gained some insight into this health habit. If you found this episode helpful, be sure to subscribe and share it with others who might benefit. And as always, I encourage you to take charge of your health by staying informed and being proactive about your body signals. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on the Silicon Fox Podcast. Mm -hmm.